All right, hello, wine drinking people. We're back with more of what I've had to drink yesterday. And, you know, when the folks from a winery like Castella di Ama walk in the door, man, I just, this is why I get out of bed in the morning. Some of the best wines made in Tuscany and Chianti. This is a relatively uh, new winery, but, uh, you know, they started in 1972. This is a project of four families from Rome, about 250 hectares, located in, in Gaiolo. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but one of my favorite regions in Chianti. Um, the Castello di Ama, definitely one of the most expensive wines with a Chianti Classico uh, namesake on it. And, you know, I think people still have a hard time spending $100 on a wine that says Chianti. Some people still remember those wines in a wicker basket that were $10, really light in color. Well, these wines are eons away from that. Hey, you have to remember just before 1979, everything was called Chianti in Tuscany just about. Well, that was the year that Antonori released his first vintage of Tignanello and started the super Tuscan craze. But uh, people going back now to traditional, more traditional things, traditional varieties in Italy. You know, there was a huge wave of people planting Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot and this winery happens to produce one of the greatest Merlots coming out of Tuscany, so I'm not saying that they don't make good wines from those varietals in Tuscany, but I tend to like the more traditional wines, the Sangiovese-based wines, and my favorite Chiantis almost always are 100% Sangiovese-based wines. All right, well, the first wine that we had was a white wine, uh, Castel di Amas uh, Alpaggio Bianco, 80% Chardonnay, 20% Pinot Grigio. has this lovely peach and white flower notes, uh, honey, and kind of wet stone minerality on the nose. Some skin fermentation, so you do get a little richness here on the palate. Uh, fresh pear, white peach-like fruit on the tongue. A firm underbelly of acidity and a nice tangy finish, showing some of that stone minerality there as well. The highest vineyards in Chianti here, 380 meters high. Um, all right, well, excellent juice. Um, I'm sorry, 490 meters is the highest. That is for the uh, uh, Aperita wine. This wine is... Uh, 380 meters. Okay, the Castel di Ama Il Chiuso. Uh, this is a blend of Pinot Noir and Sangiovese. Okay, well, they used to make 100% Pinot Noir until 2001 when these vines, uh, until they <clears throat> eventually found something else to do with these wines, I guess. Uh, red cherry and wild strawberry fruits. Um, they found it was better mixed with Sangiovese. I don't know, Pinot Noir to me is a varietal that you really don't blend. And Sangiovese also, to me, is a wine that Varietal that makes very good wines on its own. But anyways, uh, this wine kind of interesting nonetheless. Some oriental spices, some fresh flowers, a lot of uh, spice showing on the palate as well. Uh, some fruit peeking through in the middle. A nice long finish, fresh and intense, but slightly bitter there as well. Uh, a good wine, but a little confusing to me. All right, the Castel di Ama Chianti Classico. This is why we go to uh, Tuscany for Chianti. Four single vineyards that go into this wine. And uh, <clears throat> this is a uh, selection of Sangiovese. They do blend in a little Malvasia, Nero, Cabernet Franc, and Merlot. By law, it only has to be 85% Sangiovese, but a classic Chianti bouquet here. Wild strawberry, fine herbs, a hint of mint and porcini mushroom here on the nose. Nice complexity. Wow, lots of spice on the tongue. Layers of red berry fruit, silky tannins. Uh, still quite fresh here. 2008, a good vintage, more forward and kind of approachable, but this wine needs another five or ten years in the bottle. Really well built. Excellent bottle of Chianti at 4275. The Castello Yama Chianti Classico Vigneto Bella Vista. This wine has uh, only been produced five times in the last ten years. They don't make it every year. It's got 20% Malvasia Nero in it. Uh, when they don't make these single vineyard wines, they just go into the regular Chianti Classico. So lots of fresh plowed earth here, licorice, uh, dark berry fruit, smoke really complex bouquet of aromas here wow incredible tense intense intensity on the palate one of the things you get with uh, wines that are produced from low yields and this is a 2007 vintage a great vintage wine as well smooth and velvety tannins exotic spice a very long and layered finish this wine is still a baby but man it has all of the right stuff most excellent juice and it should be at 198 dollars ah Okay, we weren't ready to pay $100 for Chianti. This is $200 for Chianti. Castello di Ama, the Vigneto La Cusicurnia. Uh, I don't know how the hell you say that. All right, 80% Sangiovese, 20% Merlot, and a bit more forward and drinkable than the Bella Vista. has a lot of that brown spice and uh, a little bit um, of that plummy note on the plummy fruit, a good hand of fresh herbs and earth, smoke, licorice, very elegant and fine Chianti with layers of spice and mineral showing through the finish. Uh, still lovely dark plum and cherry fruit. Tans are a bit strong at the moment, but man, this wine has got everything else. Most excellent juice, and like I said, it's a 
should be for $198. All right, the Vignola Perito, one of the greatest Merlots made in Tuscany. They did not produce it in 2002, but um, it's made, been made since uh, 1987. Selected as one of the greatest Merlots. I'm sorry, 1985 was its first year. 1987, it was selected as one of the greatest Merlots in the world by a Swiss wine competition and thus uh, became somewhat of a cult wine. Uh, in it, in, uh, with had contestants in this, uh, like Chateau Petrus in this tasting, so very surprised for a Tuscan Merlot to come up on top. There was no Macetto still until 1986, so Vigna La Parida was released a year before the most collectible Merlot, most collectible wine in all of Italy. A lot of herbal nuance to the nose, some lovely dark spice, cocoa, rich plum, and dark cherry fruit. Penetrating bouquet, though, really intense. Silky smooth on the tongue, like velvet. Merlot tends to be more in the front of your uh, palate, not be as a uh, tannic, uh, really lovely balance, spice, mocha, lots of toasty oak, uh, really complex, a bit tannic, you know, Merlot does produce wines that are very age worthy, this wine should last at least 20 to 30 years, killer, one of the best Merlots I have ever had from Italy, as it should be for $200 a bottle. All right, the Castello B. Amo Rosato. Um, nice way to end the tasting, a little refreshing rosé, 100% Sangiovese. It's a Sagné, so this sees a little bit of skin contact, and they bleed the juice off to make the resulting wine a little more intense. Um, but this wine has got a lovely bouquet of fresh strawberry and cherry fruit here on the nose, some fresh uh, Tuscan earthy nuances, some floral notes, a really fresh and bright style of rosé, but bone dry on the finish. Very good stuff. All right, well, that's what they had to drink with our folks from Castella di Ama. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasoni, signing off for the wine watch saying remember always drink the good stuff first